So I was working on this painting in Corel Painter and I came upon a particular problem that I thought would make an interesting video. Now before I start, please excuse me. This is one of my first videos in a very long time. Uh, not only will you hear the narration of what I'm doing, I'm sure you will hear the TV from the other room. So my husband makes it louder. I'm sure you'll hear my dogs barking at some point. But we're going to just, I'm just going to try to keep on plowing through here and get this recording done. So again, I was painting this picture of my puppy and I ran into this problem. Uh, I was looking for a brush to paint my puppy's nose. I did the preliminary painting, but now I, I wanted to add some paint, kind of like in the style that is already here on the nose. And I'm going to show you what I mean with some white paint here. So I'm going to go up, because I'm, I'm looking to put a highlight on the dog's nose, so I'll do it with the... And this brush I created a very long time ago. I named it Pointillism Stroke. But as you can see, a stroke is a little thick. It's not really pointillism, is it? I mean, the highlight of the brush, the uh, what they call the ghost of the brush, looks like it's going to paint like pointillism, but clearly it doesn't. Now I had made this brush a very long time ago, probably back in Painter 7, and I always saved my brushes and imported them back into newer versions. But I will say, over time the brush tends to change. It's not, uh, it doesn't look like it was intended to look when I created it. It was supposed to be more of a pointillism look, and like I said, clearly we don't have that. So I'm going to undo that, and this is a palette I created with undo in it, and that, that will be for another video, but for now we're going to undo. And I am going to show you how to change a brush. So the first thing you do when you have a brush, you reset it to its, make sure it's at its um, default. And you do that by hitting reset here. And now you see this little brush with the settings circle and it says advanced. Um, that's how we're going to change the brush. I'm going to open this dialog here. Back in the day when you were making your own brush and you would open up the editor and see all this stuff, Painter did not tell you what this stuff meant. But the good thing is now if you hover, you can see it'll show you. Uh, what that particular setting does. Clumpiness, thickness of the brush, hair scale. So if you've worked with regular paint brushes, this is going to help you understand what to change to change the brush. So this is a reminder again of what the brush looks like right now. We have two things here. We have the stroke preview, we have the dab preview. The dab preview is just it's a bristle blender and it's going to show you what the dab, I, I kind of like usually set a brush to that. I don't really edit this shape media so we can go back to the stroke preview. The things that I'm going to edit and I'm going to try to open this dialog box a little bit but again painter is resistant to that. So we're going to start with the size of the brush. This is the actual size. Since I'm going to keep this brush as a highlighter, I'm going to keep it at that. Now here is something called a jitter. The jitter um, keeps this brush from being a straight line. It kind of like shakes it up. It's the best way to say it. So I'm going to up the jitter. I'm going to just go to 20% and then I'm going to do a stroke and see what it looks like. Uh, not much different changing the jitter. I'm going to undo, undo. Um, so I'm not going to do that. Smoothness. Okay, expression. Well, when they say if you want to change the expression of the brush, it's how you press on the pen on the tablet. 
So the brush will change with your velocity, with your direction, with your pressure. Some of this will be handled by the tablet, so you really usually set the expression to none. I will, I'm going to set the expression to velocity just to show you what that means. So when I move the brush faster, it should present differently. The faster I can move the brush, the more of the effect I'll get. But I'm going to keep that on none. And then the size step. So the size step is in relation to the jitter. You can kind of see that it's almost like the same. That's again, whether you're going to get a regular smooth brush or you're going to get, I'm just going to leave that. Dab stencil, we're going to, we're going to leave that. Dab stencil is when you're creating a brush from a dab of paint and that will be for another video. But here's the important thing, the static bristles. Okay. So first of all, let me undo so I can test it out. Oh, all right. I'm going to go back, reset. If you ever make a mistake in this process, you can reset the brush and it'll go back to your original settings. So, okay. Draw that paint and the thickness. I am going to make the brush. This makes the hairs of the brush thinner. Let's see what that does. Okay. It, it kind of makes it a little faint. I don't know if that's really what I'm going for. I'm going to put that well, I could just reset it. I'm going to reset it. Okay, it was at 52. I'm going to set it at 50 just so I can remember. Now, the clumpiness of the brush. I have a feeling this will do more than anything else. So, I'm going to take the, cl the clumpiness down to 50%. And now, I'm going to do this joke. Okay, the clumpiness helped a little bit. Let's undo, undo. Let's do it right next to the old stroke. Component. Let's do hair scale. Again, this is if the hair is going to be thin, it's going to be thick. If we make the hair thin, it gets a little more of that, a um, little bit more jittery, but not exactly what I'm looking for. I'm actually looking to get some space between the bristles. I want it to look more like individual little dots. That's getting close to what I, I want. I want more space. So now, since I upped the hair scale, now I'm going to try to thin the brush. So I take the thickness down, and I'm going to yeah that's more what i'm looking for something with more space between the bristles um now the brush is lighter than it was before so i'm going to go up here to the resatch resatch is the amount of color you have on your brush i'm going to up it to 80. now this is all hit or miss as you do these changes it's pretty much just testing the brush when you make a change now the bleed the bleed is you can see how it'll mix the paint that's already on the canvas and how it'll present the paint you're putting down I'm gonna go lower on the bleed first and now I'm starting to get more spaces between two I think I'll go lower on the bleed more Sorry, guys. Now, they give you too many pop-up boxes. Okay. Undo that. Undo. I think I'm going to also make the size of the brush bigger because now as I'm changing things, it's getting smaller. I'm going to put it at 15. Let's see now what this looks like compared to the old brush. Oh, there we go. Starting to have a little... Let me see now. If I go back to the jitter now and I hit the jitter, let's see what happens. I'll put the jitter on 20%. Let's see. So undo that. Well, let me do it. I want to compare. Ah, now the jitter makes a ever so slight change to the brush. And since I'm trying to get like 
almost like a dry brush effect. I'm not going to hit the smoothness because I don't want it to be smooth. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to up the steps too because I told you that's compared, that's with the jitter. So let's undo this. Ah, more space, more jumping around. The, the brush is jumping around a little bit more now. I don't know how else to explain jitter. Thing like jitterbug, I guess. Maybe I'll just call it that here and that'll be my thing. This is the jitter. This is the jitterbug part of the brush. Now we're gonna investigate some of these other boxes. Let's try the angle. We're going to go into the angle and here is the squeeze. This could be something important to getting my brush more with more space between the bristle hairs. I'm going to take the squeeze down and you can see it flattens the brush. So I'm going to take the squeeze down to 60%. I bet this is going to make a big difference. Now these percentages are not like real percentages I, I I don't know how to explain it it's a percentage of the brush I guess you would say not a percentage in life actually I'm not loving that I'm not loving that I'm losing what I want so I'm gonna put the squeeze back at I'm gonna put the squeeze at 75 percent again like I said this is all hit or miss yeah maybe the squeeze at 100 percent okay angle Angle again, this is going to show you, hover over it, it's going to show you, you're going to go from a straight brush to a brush that's tipped on its side. So let's do the angle. Maybe we'll do the angle jitter, because you see how it's making, um, it's making like the pixels from a straight stroke to like jitterbug. It looks like little jitterbugging, little dancing bugs. Okay, I'm going to up the angle jitter. If I'm going to up the angle, I'm going to up the angle jitter and see what happens. Now, I'm not nervous. I don't have my original brush anymore because I'm hitting the angle. I know that's the only thing I changed. The angle range. That is how far the brush, I believe, how, the angle steps and the angle raise range is how much the brush will twist around when you're using it from straight to on its side let's put them both at 20 and you could see in comparison what it does up there actually like that's I, i'm trying now that i have that space between dots of paint i'm trying to open the brush up a little bit more um might as well tell you why i'm doing this because you would say, why are you spending all this time doing this? It's not without its purpose. And this is another thing you'll find. Sometimes painter won't stop at, the, like, I don't know why. Why won't you stop at 40%? No, you have to go 41. Okay. We'll give you that. You could have 41. I, I'm, I'm really liking what's happening. To this brush let's go with the spacing the spacing if you hover over ah remember i said i wanted the distance between the brush jabs and the stroke i want to I, I have a feeling if i go up with the spacing that's going to help me a lot to get where i want to get i'm going to go to 50 percent ah yeah that's opening up the brush like i said i think we might have to go to 100 percent opacity now on this brush to get the amount of paint we were getting before uh, or how how much it presents because it's getting a little getting a little see-through now the paint but that's okay maybe I'll go up to 85 on the research okay so minimum spacing now I'm hovering it's not telling me I don't know did it stop telling me when I hover Okay, I, uh, yeah, there we go, spacing, minimum spacing, ah, there we go, so, uh, minimum, sometimes painter gets temperamental, you might have to grab your mouse to get it to do something that your brush was doing, and then it just gets a little fussy, so, 
let's let's open up the minimum spacing let's go to three let's see what that looks like okay my brush is getting more and more open I like that now um, since I played with some of these before maybe I do you can always go back and like reconsider something you change because you changed something else and now the brush is presenting differently if I go to 40% thickness hey that that's getting me a little bit of my color back I like that maybe I'll go to 35 so this is all playing you're gonna play and stroke this is all play this is all play to figure out you're gonna play and then you're gonna put your paint down trying to figure out how to say it where it doesn't sound like something dirty we all know how YouTube is all right we're gonna go I'm gonna go back to these ha this hair scale maybe put that down a little bit just a little bit now try again oh uh, oh uh, no maybe I don't I don't want to change that I, I was liking what I had to just put it back I don't want to test it if I hit undo it might undo all the changes I made to this brush so I'm not gonna do that tonight I might do that for another video to prove or do it when I'm not not doing a screen capture anyway all right the last thing is the smoothing jitter reduction now we're gonna we're gonna stay away from that we want it jittery uh, facet reduction points. This one really doesn't have facet, facets. Oh my, uh, sorry. My tongue got stuck. My tongue got stuck again. This one doesn't really have facets. We'll talk about fac facets in another video. That is another thing you will hear in these videos. You will hear me fumble. Sorry. And there you have it once you finish your brush this is you're going to save it so that it was called pointillism stroke if i don't want to lose pointillism stroke and i don't i never like to lose a brush i go to brushes here and i'm gonna go uh save variant and I'm going to call it something else. I'm just going to take the stroke part off and call it pointillism. And I might as well save it in empties paints. So I'm going to save it there. Okay, so now this is our new brush. This is pointillism. And here is our old brush that we based it on. Where are you? Pointillism paint. Point pointillism stroke that was the brush we had pointillism stroke oh reset it ah i caught myself and this is a good instruction for you why did these two brushes come out the same because i didn't reset pointillism stroke back to how it was originally so there is the original pointillism stroke, and that is the new brush that we created from it. So I hope you found that educational, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.